Now that we have our head, we're going to put together the body. The body is way easier, I promise. And there's a couple different things you can do with the legs. Before we get started on those legs, we're going to sew our tail together, right sides together, just really simple, starting at the point of one, down around to the other point. And you're gonna notch the curve and turn it right side out. And then we're going to sew this top seam right here. So I'm gonna show you how to do this part real quick. Just start at the, at one edge. All the way to the other edge and back stitch. I've got my finished tail and now I've got the two back pieces sewn together. And now I'm going to sew the belly pieces together. You'll notice on the dog, the belly piece is where we're going to leave it open for turning and stuffing. So as you're sewing the belly piece, you wanna sew the top portion, leave an opening, and then sew the bottom portion all the way up into the tail. So this edge here is where you wanna sew. This is the center of your belly. This is where you're going to add legs. So make sure you're sewing on this edge here. Back stitch at the beginning and end of each start and stop. So here's my opening. I'll show you right through there. Okay, so that's gonna be where we're gonna turn and stuff the dog. With our belly piece open, let me just move that tail out of the way, we're going to start placing our legs. The legs can be done a couple of different ways. You can sew it so the legs are floppy or so that the legs are stuffed. This leg here is stuffed. It makes it stiffer and the stuffing goes from the foot all the way up into the body. If you sew it so that it's floppy, this whole entire leg will be closed off. You won't be able to, once it's stuffed, you won't be able to get any more stuffing in there and then your dog will likely lay like this, okay? So I prefer to make them stuffed, but again, if you want to make it easier, you can sew it into the seam. So to sew it into the seam, you would just want to sew all your edges, put your foot pad in if you want, and then attach it to your legs at this point. If you don't want to and you wanna do it stuffed as I'm gonna show you, just keep one piece in your hand. Make sure, see this little curve here? This is the front of the foot. The back of the foot or the heel is gonna be straighter. So you wanna place the curve up towards the dog head. I'm going to crease my center point on the leg and I'm going to crease the center point on this little armhole and I'm gonna match those up. Pin it in place and then follow the curve or you can straighten out the curve as I just did. Straighten out the curve and pin that in place. And then straighten this side of the curve and pin it in place. Okay, now we're gonna sew from one side to the other. Now we have one leg attached and we have the curve upright, which is the front of the paw. And we're going to attach the other paw, the other leg over here, as well as the two down at the bottom, following the exact same steps. Once you have all four legs attached to the belly, we're going to lay it down and we're going to take the back of the French Bulldog body and we're going to start attaching it to the belly. To start, this little straight edge has to be attached to the neckline this way. So it's gonna look a little weird at first, but as you can see on the dog, the fullness wraps around, so the body piece wraps around to create that fullness and it attaches to the belly on this little edge here. Okay, we're going to pin it in place because we want to pin and make sure that our legs, leg pieces on the top of the body so if we pin it in place, we can make sure that the leg pieces are attached to the body in the exact spot that they need to be so that it all lines up together, okay? And now I'm going to take one of my leg pieces, again, making sure that I have this paw curve up front because if I sew it like this, 
I'm going to have one front, one back. That won't work. So I'm going to line these two up right along here. I'm just going to flip up the edge a little. And I'm going to line up the edge like that. Once I've got that in place, I know that these two pieces are going to line up. So I can let go of the top leg, move it out of the way, and now I can sew this in place. And now I can pin this in place. To figure out the back leg placement, you want to pin the center where the tail will go. But we're not going to put the tail in there just yet. We will in a minute. And just find the curves. You got to fiddle with your fabric a little bit. Follow the curves of the top and the bottom or the back and the belly and just pin everything in place so that you know it's going to line up. I've lined up my curves and pinned them in place and now I know exactly where that leg is going to fall. So again, I can place my leg piece down and then fold over here and follow my curve around the edge. Once I have that in place, I can pin that back leg the same as I did the front leg. Then I'm going to pin the other two and I'm going to sew them all together. You're going to sew these leg pieces just as you did on the belly, but you can take the belly piece off so that it's out of your way and just sew the legs on at the same time. Now I have all my leg pieces attached to the belly piece and the back piece and now I want to put them together. To do that, we're going to repin our back and belly pieces just as we did before to figure out the leg placement. We're going to do it again and we're going to pin the tail in place and we're going to sew it all up. To keep the tail in place, I'm going to actually sew this before we pin all the rest of it. And I'm going to make sure to straighten out this little edge here because the body actually curves inward just ever so slightly. So just straighten it out and sew that in place really quick. You don't have to do a quarter inch seam allowance. You can just stay a little closer to the edge. This is just to help you keep pins out of the way and make it a little bit easier. With my tail attached, I'm going to pin these two center pieces together, the center seams, and just line them up. And I'm going to sew one half of the body first. So even though I'm putting this in at the center seam, I want to start this curve right here. It's a really, really strong curve on the dog. So as that is pinned in there, pin it in place on the curve. So let me show you on this dog. And you can see it. there's, it's almost like a little pocket that goes up in there because it's such a strong curve. But you can see on the top, it comes to a little bit of a point. So we're going to start by pinning them together like this. And I've got a little corner here on the outside of the legs. I'm going to pin that in place. I'm going to line up my legs, pin that in place, and I'm going to keep going around the body. If all your points are lined up and it's all pinned in place, it'll make the sewing a lot quicker and easier. Again, when you're getting to up to the neck, make sure to turn this fabric. It's not going to be sewn this way. You have to turn the body piece perpendicular. Okay, that'll give that fullness in the neck. Now we're going to start sewing this side of the body by starting at the tail, starting with that curve. We're going to go all the way down to this point in the foot. If you want to add a foot pad, do not sew this curve. This is where you're going to add your foot pad, foot pad on the bottom. Once you've sewn to this point, start up here and go around the belly again to the other point on the foot. And then you'll sew this little neck piece. 
Again, leave the bottoms of the foot open. Once you sew this side, go ahead and pin and sew the other side as well. Make sure each time when you're sewing the other side and pinning the other side that you follow the curve. And as you get to these legs, you want to make sure that you come in right where the seam allowance is. And then turn and pivot. Lock in your stitches at the beginning and end so that nothing comes apart as you are turning and stuffing your dog. With our body and belly and legs all sewn together, we're going to add the foot pads. Before you place your foot pads, you can make different choices on the color. If you want to do a white foot pad, like a sock, you can do that, or you can keep it the same color. I've chosen to use the same color, and you'll notice the foot pad is actually a little bit wider at the top and a little bit skinnier at the base. That's so that the fullness is in the front of the foot and not in the back of the foot. I make a crease to find my center spots, and then I'm going to match my center crease with my center seams. Again, there's a little bit more fiddling here, but the results are worth it. So you wanna pin your center seam in the front and pin the center seam in the back. Once you have your center seams lined up, flatten out your side edges and pin them in place. You can do a couple of pins on each side. Once you do that, you'll be able to sew this actually on your sewing machine. I find it really easy if it's flattened out to sew it right on the machine. If you don't want to sew it on your machine, you don't like sewing little tiny pieces, you can sew it by hand if you want. It's kind of, if I flatten it out like this, it'll sit right on my sewing machine and I can just keep turning it and go in a circle. I have all my little paws sewn together and now I'm going to attach the head to the body. To do that, we want to find the two openings. You have the belly opening, which is right under here, and you have the neck opening. So I want to make sure, I'm just gonna show you this is my little trick. To make sure I'm putting it in the right way, I want it to look like this. These two seams are gonna be attached here. Now I just know to flip that right down, okay? You wanna line up the belly to the chin. If you're using black and white fabric as I did on this dog, you're going to want to make sure that you use a white thread here and then a black thread around wherever it's black. So I did a lot of switching of threads for this one to make sure that I wouldn't have black stitching showing where it was white and I wouldn't have white stitching showing where it was black. If you use white here, you can always use a Sharpie marker to cover it up, but don't tell anyone I said that. With this being gray and white fabric, I'm just using white thread and it's gonna be fine. So you wanna line up your Seam allowance is here from one edge to the next. And if you kept the same seam allowance, they'll line up just fine. Pin the head all the way around on the inside. So you wanna just stuff that down in there. Find your center seams. This is where our seams are our friends. It helps us to know exactly where to line things up. And then once you are done lining everything up, you can sew it in place. Now we have our neck all sewn up and we're going to turn our body right side out. But first we have to clip and notch all the way around our dog. So I'm gonna show you a couple of points that are really, really important for clipping and notching. First of all, when you're doing the arms, you wanna get the front of the arm and the armpits because these are pretty much a right angle. And when you turn and stuff that, if you don't clip it first, it'll, it'll be kind of crimped and it, it's not gonna to wanna to relax and open up for you. It'll just kind of stay like this. So we're going to just clip in there as close as we can without cutting the seam and again, notching around our outward curves. Just 
take those little pieces out. Make sure to be about three to four threads away from the seam so that you don't cut the seam. Again, when you're doing corners, go as close up in there, three to four threads away as you can without cutting the seam right there. And then when you're doing the foot pads, same thing, it's an outward curve, so you're just gonna clip a little notch in there. Little tiny triangle. It's kind of hard to see. I've got all this fabric in the way here. I do know somebody else who likes to fold their fabric and they clip a little notch just like that. Once you do that, you're going to turn the dog right side out. So I'm just going to show you real quick, even though I still have some turning and stuffing to do. We're going to start with our legs. Be gentle. Don't push too hard. You don't want to pop any seams for any reason. Turn out all the feet. And then we can just push the head right out. And there you have your little dog. Before you start stuffing, you want to check all of your legs, all your seams, make sure everything is the way it should be and you don't have any raw edges showing where they shouldn't be because it'll be harder to fix later. Once you've done that, you can stuff your dog. As you're stuffing your dog, you want to start with the feet and work your way up and then you can stuff the muzzle and then the rest of the head and then you want to stuff into the body. Once your body is stuffed completely, you can stitch the belly with a ladder stitch and you can place your eyes. If you want to do safety eyes, you want to make sure to do that earlier in the process when you're making the face because once your head is stuffed, it'll be difficult to get into there and actually clip them together. But you can also do some simple buttons. You can do embroidery, wool felt eyes. It's really up to you. You have a lot of options with fabric. You can do a great cuddle fabric. If you use cuddle fabric and you're cutting out on the machine and the dies, you want to make sure that you use a piece of muslin down on the die first and then one layer of cuddle at a time. Make sure again when you do your second layer you do a mirror image so you do it right side up on one turn and right side down on another. That way you'll have mirror image pieces and the muslin will actually control how much fuzz you get all over your die. There's lots of different options for fabric and eyes and ways to make these dogs your own. I can't wait to see what you make and hope you have fun.